impairment of assets what is impairment why do you need impairment cost loss okay why the loss usance fire damage fire accidents technological change obsolence okay how do you calculate impairment do you calculate impairment are you required to calculate impairment every year see first of all there are two things one is indicator of impairment next is test for impairment you will test for impairment only if there is a indicator for impairment if there is no indicator for impairment you are not required to test for impairment okay so you will check for indicator for impairment every year and do a test of impairment only when there is a indicator so this exercise will be annual और वेन एवर इट हैपन सपोज आज एक्सीडेंट हो गया तो आज इंडिकेटर हो गया एंड दिस एक्सरसाइज इज वेन इंडिकेटर एग्जिस्ट ओके नो वॉट इज टेस्ट फॉर इंपेयरमेंट टेस्ट फॉर इंपेयरमेंट मीन्स यू हैव टू चेक वेदर रिकवरेबल अमाउंट is greater than or equal to your carrying amount what is carrying amount book value carrying amount is wdv book value actual amount whatever you might say whatever amount is there on your balance sheet basically okay what is recoverable amount amount that can be recovered right what amount can be recovered if cost of asset can be recovered then recoverable amount will always be greater than wdv how much output can be taken from that asset its profitability scrap value insurance value standard says two things recoverable amount is higher of fair value less cost to sell fair value means market value if i want to sell it today what is the market value i will get minus my cost to sell okay to so olx pe dal diya <laughs> so there is no cost to sell if there is a cost to sell then you have to subtract from fair value so whatever is the net value that is one and second is value in use what is value in use cost of benefits will be derived by using the asset the value of benefits that you can derive by using the asset is value in use how do you calculate value in use? you have to prepare a cash flow future cash flow arising out of that asset then discount it to today's value that present value will be considered as value in use whichever is higher value in use or fair value less cost to sell will be considered as recoverable amount recoverable amount if higher or equal to carrying value no impairment if it is lower then impairment so suppose this is 50 this is 70 so my recoverable amount becomes 70 if my carrying amount is 100 then there is a impairment i have to bring it down to 70 so my impairment is 30 rupees if this is 60 already then there is no impairment is this clear asset value is 1 rupees ha huh. so how will calculate the carrying uh, amount carrying amount will be 1 rupee in that case in case uh, there is very big loss on assets see 
as i said the two options the 1 rupee wala option you don't follow right you follow the first option which is you put it at gross value so asset has a gross value it does not have 1 rupee if you follow second method then there will be no impairment because it is already at 1 rupee you cannot bring it to 0 rupee or lower value it is always 1 rupee is equal to 0 value so then then there cannot be any impairment impairment can only be when carrying amount is carrying amount is greater than recoverable amount so carrying amount itself is zero so recoverable amount cannot be less than zero good method is gross value but the net value method will make the life easier net value method will make the life easier definitely for sure but then the only problem is in net value method your balance sheet will be at 1 rupee situation will have not to calculate any depreciation no depreciation no, no impairment no impairment no headache no headache absolutely okay now the question is value in use i said value in use can be calculated using future cash flows then discount it can you do for all your assets can you do for this furniture this is my asset this furniture this room this is my asset asset of this institution can i calculate value in use of this asset use use the life cycle and the cost incurred at the time of the purchase based on that some can be calculated see it says a lot of assets administrative assets see those which are not my equipments equipments i can definitely use and uh, generate assets uh, generate value or say classroom see suppose a classroom i cannot calculate value in use for every furniture in the classroom ye light ka kitna value hai ye projector ka kitna value hai ye bench ka kitna value hai ye mic ka kitna value hai i cannot calculate but then there is something called a cgu <laughs> what is cgu <laughs> cgu is cash generating unit a unit a smallest unit which which can generate cash cash flows now what is that unit can i consider a classroom as a cash generating unit yes right so i cannot calculate cash generating capacity of this furniture this furniture or this furniture but i can calculate cash generating capacity of this classroom which includes all these furnitures right so then it says in cases where individual assets cannot generate cash flows i should combine those individual assets make a cash generating unit and then calculate impairment for that cash generating unit how will you calculate impairment for cash generating unit you can know carrying amount of all these assets together so i have carrying amount let's calculate recoverable amount recoverable amount value in use can i calculate cash flows future cash flows and discount for this classroom yes yes every classroom can accommodate 60 students a classroom can have uh, 250 classes in a year suppose just an example 50 student 250 class matlab say suppose one academic year of 50 students one academic year of 50 students can be in this classroom i can definitely calculate unse fees kya aa rahi hai and i can have a cash flow for this classroom right can i calculate fair value less cost to sale yes if i suppose i sell these assets i will have a fair value less cost to sell for all these assets so all the three value are in place if i consider this as a classroom as one unit if all the three values are in place then i can calculate impairment acha kab hoga ye matlab suppose ye classroom mein kuch accident ho gaya kuch aag lag gayi kuch bhi ho gaya okay then i know that there is a indicator for impairment when i know there is a indicator for impairment now definitely isme 15 bench jal gayi baki sari bench barobar hai so i cannot calculate impairment for 15 bench then i do what then i calculate impairment for this entire classroom and then i impair the impairment jo bhi value aega see i have all the assets listed separately in my balance sheet furniture is separate lights is separate right so impairment kaise hoga fir impairment calculate ho gaya classroom ke liye how will i allocate that impairment to 15 bench are you getting my point are you getting my question okay this classroom has these assets
consumables can be chalks or dusters or whatever I might consider as assets, okay. 100 desk, board, 5 board, 500 consumables, 500 lights, 3 microphone, whatever I have listing, okay. Now I calculate, I have carrying amount of all these assets in my books. So I will know what is carrying amount of 100 desk, say 1 lakh rupees. 5 board say 10,000 rupees, 500 consumable say 5,000 rupees, 500 lights say 50,000 rupees, 3 microphone I do not know 3,000 rupees suppose. So basically I have carrying amount of all this, this is my total carrying amount of the cash generating unit whatever it might be 1 lakh 50, 60, 68, 1 lakh 68,000. Okay, now 15 benches have caught fire or have been damaged, 15 benches, okay. Now out of 100 desk, 15 desk have caught fire. I cannot calculate recoverable amount or value in use of 15 desk. I will calculate recoverable amount of this unit, okay. Then what to do? Then this unit, abhi pehle capacity tha, ye 250 bachcho ko ek saath एक academic year में it can do, but ये 15 desk जलने के बाद 30 students will reduce. So now it can take only 220 students, right? So 220 students का suppose I calculate what is the revenue generated from those 220 students throughout the year, okay? So I don't know, say 10,000 rupees fees लेता हूँ मैं. 220 students say it will come to 220,000 something. Let us take something less than 168. So 150,000 is the revenue generated or the profits generated of, of out of using this unit, right? Now 150 is my profit generated, 160 is my carrying amount. Is there impairment? Yes or no? Yes, 18,000 is impairment, right? The value which I will derive out of using this classroom is only 1,50,000. The carrying amount of all the assets is 1,68,000. That means there is a 18,000 over valuation of these assets or 18,000 impairment to be done for all these assets. So my impairment value is 18,000. How do I assign this 18,000 now? I know that the impairment is in this 15 desk and not in all other things, right? So this 18,000 will be distributed among this 15 desk. So this value of 1 lakh will become 82,000. Is this clear or any doubts in this? This is how you calculate impairment. This is an illustration for you know loss of the furniture and all. But in the practical, there will be huge loss, loss of revenue because the hall will not be usable for remaining uh, 200 days. Right. It may take time to renovate the hall and 20, 30 days or 40 days classes cannot take place. That loss also will be. How to account for that loss? See that loss will not, see impairment is for future. That loss is immediate loss. It has to be booked in. So calculated revenue for the balance period only. But now I have calculated for future. Suppose वो 15 bench में ठीक ही नहीं करवाता हूँ, classroom ऐसे ही चलती है. नहीं, वो classroom बंद ही हो जाता है. Because unless the matrix are cleared and things are put in proper shape, classes cannot take place. Because uh, students will not sit with the burnt benches in the front or back or middle. So there will be actual loss will be much more than what is projected. See, when you, when you can repair the benches and you can use it for your classroom and then the classroom can generate the normal uh, value which it was generating. Okay, and if if that's the case, then you add whatever is your आपका जो भी खर्चा लगा है to repair it. Okay, that value you add over here. Suppose मेरे को 20,000, 25,000 लगा है to repair it. So my carrying amount will become 125. See वो जो 25,000 लगता है, do you capitalize it or not? Amount spent to repair the machine, all the fixed assets. What do you do with that? Suppose I spent 25,000 to repair this desk. What do I do with that? Add to the cost of the asset. No, in one of the lectures, we talked about that if we are bringing to the same level, then it will not be like. 
राइट एंड इफ वी आर इंक्रीजिंग समथिंग या सिंपली रिपेयरिंग और रिप्लेसमेंट राइट इट विल नॉट बी कैपिटलाइज्ड इन दैट सेंस सो इफ माय फ्यूचर इकोनॉमिक बेनिफिट रिमेन सेम बिफोर एंड आफ्टर द रिपेयर दैट मींस यू आर ब्रिंगिंग टू द सेम प्रोडक्टिविटी लेवल देन यू विल नॉट कैपिटलाइज सो वेयर विल द 25000 गो एक्सपेंस एंड नाउ योर एसेट इज बैक टू द सेम लेवल तो देन देयर विल बी नो इंपेयरमेंट impairment will be when the damage is permanent when the damage cannot be repaired suppose there is a equipment which has been damaged and which cannot be repaired okay but you can still use it to some productivity level suppose it cannot be used it then you will sell it or scrap it and bring a new equipment again there is no impairment because you have sold it whatever is the loss you book the loss immediately in profit and loss account sorry suppose that equipment is not sold as on 31st march equipment is damaged but not sold then there is a impairment if you have sold before 31st march then there is no impairment then there is loss on sale if it is standing as on 31st march then you have to check for impairment and impair it so that cannot be repaired desk if it can be repaired and bring back to the same level then there is no impairment because you have already charged 25000 to pnl so no further charge to pnl because of this clear sir recoverable amount if less than net book value it is impairment recoverable amount is calculated as higher of value in use or fair value first you test for indication for impairment indication of impairment can be change in technology physical damage or obsolescence test for impairment you calculate value in use or fair value let less cost to sell you compare it with book value and then you decide whether there is impairment or not if recoverable amount is less than carrying amount there is a impairment then you reduce the carrying amount and charge the difference to income and expenditure account then the balance amount in the carrying value will now be depreciated over the balance useful life of the asset so balance amount in carrying all, uh, carrying value will be depreciated over balance useful life any questions on impairment uh, that they are middle of the er so the physical verification team in their final report gives the list of obsolete assets but uh, i think it is practical approach i am saying since i am in the sector practical sector so uh, management is not interested in doing all uh, getting into those impairment troubles huh. so they, they declare it an obsolete and we used to write off the assets this is the practical thing happens actually you write off the asset yeah write off the asset if you write off it is Because practically it is it is same <laughs> as impairment in our when you write off the asset yeah. it is practically same as impairment but we never uh, think about the value in use or the fair market value what is the cost of sales of those assets we have one big room where broken chairs computers table everything ah. is stacked so on the basis of obsolete uh, so kharab ho gaya usko side mein rakh do scrap kar do ekdom, ekdom. naya le aao so ekdom. there is a replacement and that has gone so there this is no this is the usual practice past practice of all that institute that is practical IT. approach actually this is unimportant uh, accounting standard mane it it hardly applies okay uh, let me ask you a question okay fixed asset related question so you have you have a computer okay which you have purchased around 3 years back or 2 years back okay and then there is something uh, called as motherboard Okay suppose there is a damage to motherboard and the computer stops working you bring in a new motherboard you have to replace it you bring in a new motherboard and then you install it and the computer starts working okay that new motherboard has costed you say 7000 rupees how do you account for that 7000 rupees repair expense out that's why i'm asking is there anyone who capitalizes it yes okay and what do we do what do you do about the old motherboard wo to wahi capitalized hai wo to rahega waise scrap to nahi hota hai <laughs> do you sell it scrap means fake diya scrap means fake diya <laughs> do you remove it from your books you physically remove it fine do you remove it from your books Yes how do you remove it from your books one second one second let him answer how do you remove it from your books and the obsolete items will be sold now 
the the the, the depreciate do you sell that motherboard whatever list issue from the it department and if it is part of obsolete item the net depreciated amount will be reduced from the asset also see understand this you don't capitalize a motherboard you capitalize entire computer right you capitalize entire computer how do you calculate value depreciated value as you said of the motherboard then how can you remove that motherboard from the books of accounts and are you saying that then my computer has two motherboards you have capitalized two motherboards in that computer right no 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 how that's what my question is how do you write off how do you calculate the value measurement how do you value after uh, depreciation whatever the value left how do you calculate the value left sir i purchased the computer for 30000 rupees which includes a motherboard a hard disk a keyboard a mouse it's a computer i have not purchased the motherboard only the motherboard has gone bad i bring in a new motherboard install that new motherboard the new motherboard cost 7000 if you capitalize that 7000 what happens to the old motherboard but that computer includes cost of old motherboard doesn't it yes sir but it, 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 it has depreciated from the years sir so once it is declared uh, obsolete no it's depreciating over the years so and then when we buy a new motherboard we add to it so as as uh, you know uh, pankaj ji would have said or just now sir repeated that when it bring backs to the same level of efficiency you cannot capitalize anything so 7000 new motherboard will get me the same efficiency as the old motherboard life also again increase life increase of computer yes okay if if <laughs> if you have a contention that life increases because of that 7000 then you should remove that old motherboard from your computer that means you should do both you cannot keep capitalize both the motherboards if you capitalize one then you have to remove the other i let me capitalize the computer not the motherboard but right. now we are capitalizing motherboard right so can a computer has two motherboards it can't <laughs> earlier you capitalized computer but that computer included cost of motherboard right say suppose my my car my car has four tires suppose ek tire phat gaya ek tire kharab ho gaya i bring in new tire i fit in the new tire definitely as you said life increases life increases right but if i capitalize that tire what happens to the old tire cost of that old tire cost of that old tire has to be removed from my books of accounts because that has yes. been scrapped now how do you how do i calculate the cost of that old tire okay now as 10 as 10 does not tell how to calculate the cost of old tire but there are international standards which is is 16 international accounting standard which says that how to do this suppose my as i said new motherboard cost 7000 okay i have used the computer already for 3 years what is my depreciation rate for computers 5 Five, 60% right now the international standard says that assume that the old motherboard also costed 7000 rupees i now depreciate this 7000 for 60% for 3 years so 4200 again 60% again 60% whatever the value comes here i charge it to pnl your income and expenditure account i decapitalize it then i capitalize that 7000 This is what international standards say. AS10 is silent on this. It does not guide you how to calculate. But then logically, yes, you have to remove the old before capitalizing the new. You cannot have both the motherboards in one computer. In fact, new. Uh, if you if you see, uh, it is for companies basically. Revise Schedule Six. Uh, but the new guidelines says that you have to account for asset component wise. It says component accounting. So hard disk. separately a motherboard separately so yes. there is you have taken the example of motherboard the same example is given in the uh, training material which is related to hard disk hard disk it yes. says that if you remove the 40 gb hard disk and you install a 500 gb hard disk then you have to capitalize the value of the new hard disk right 
because the capacity is increased then you will capitalize then how but then you have to decapitalize 40 gb if you have removed from the computer and it is of no use if it can be installed in some other computer or 40 gb hard disk you can still use then you keep it that somewhere 40 else 40 gb hard disk has been destroyed if it has been destroyed then you have to decapitalize the value of 40 gb hard disk then we should go to a valuer to get the value of that 40 gb hard disk you should you should you can easily find out a value of 40 gb hard disk today and then you depreciate it for the number of years you have used and that value you take out from that the would a 40 gb hard disk are not available in market on the any estimated it how can we get we have purchased the computer 5 years ago how can we get the value of that if you have purchased the computer 5 years back and you are depreciating it at 60% then whatever is the value is today the value will be not material so ignore it practically the cost of the hard disk will be zero at that that, that at today's value right yes. because 5 years you have already used it there is okay. no meaning of decapitalizing in fact ha huh. so then now if you have used it for 5 years then yes the value is almost zero today so forget it component wise reporting is to be done Uh, this costing is to be done. The tire is to be separately uh, done. Then AC is to be done separately. Then body is to be done separately. See, component accounting logic is there has to be two things. One, the life of the component should be different from the life of other components. So, if my life of tire is different from life of engine is different from life of my other body parts of the car. And secondly, the component should be material for the the amount of the cost of that component should be material for the car. So, if my car costs seven lakh rupees and tire costs thousand rupees, definitely I will not do component accounting for that. But if my engine cost me two lakh rupees and the car cost me seven lakh rupees, then engine and the other parts of the car should be separated if the life of engine is separate from the life of car. This is the logic behind component accounting.